of you. I want to know when I'm to be released. My nephew's paid you the money, hasn't he? You told me so when you were here before. Yeah, that's right, but there have been some other delays. Well, now you've received the money, why don't you keep your end of the bargain? Well, I can't answer that. The big boss dishes out orders and I follow them. Here. Morrison, no matter what you federal men think, I believe that young Scott is mixed up in this kidnapping. Not to my way of thinking. Chief, you just point out to me one concrete lead that ties him up with this kidnapping. Well, you can bet your hand any way you like. I am playing mine according to the cards that I hold. Young Scott's been tossing around money like confetti. The old man may have turned off the supply. no nearer a solution of the Scott kidnapping than they were yesterday at this time. The last development still holds. That is, the ransom has been paid, but the millionaire has not been delivered as prearranged. Flash. Rumors throughout the various cafes in the city carry a sinister note regarding this latest snatch. These whispers run to the effect that it was an inside job. That is all... Extra. I'll see if there's anything new, will you? Sure, Mr. Scott, but nothing has popped to headquarters that put us wide. Yeah, maybe you're right, but I want one. Here. All right, have it your way. Hello? Mr. Larry, this is Kimball. I just came up on the afternoon train. I must see you right away. The Aztec Cafe, you know, near the plaza. Come in the rear entrance. Nobody will see you. Yeah, I'll get there early and watch for you. Are the police in on it? No. I haven't said a word to anybody. All right. All right, goodbye. Johnson, get busy. Yes, sir. Chief Howell speaking. Oh, all right, Daly, let me have it. Scott upstairs just talked to a man who called himself Kimball. He and uh, Scott arranged to meet at the old Aztec Cafe. Yeah, down near the old plaza. About 8 o'clock tonight. Good work, Daly. Keep the dictaphone open. Did you trace the call? The operator's working on it now. Contact me just as soon as you get the information. Well, young Scott has a date to meet a man by the name of Kimball at a Mexican dive on the plaza. So, that's something we'll have to find out about.
people want, senor? No, there'll be some others. I'll wait at the bar. See, si, senor. Kimball isn't in there. Are you sure? Yeah. But I did hear Scott tell the head waiter that he was waiting for a friend. That's swell. All right. You stake out at the rear entrance, Joe. Paul, you stick around here. I'll plant myself in a private room. Now get busy. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Sorry? But what about my dress? Are you drunk? I beg your pardon. Hey, haven't I had trouble with you someplace before? Well, that's possible. I've been someplace before. Remarkable. Really? Cigarette? Thank you. Mr. Kimball? What? Mr. Scott is waiting for you in room number three. <laughs> Sit down, Kimball. What do you men want with me? Oh, we just want to have a little talk with you. About what? So you thought you'd pull a fast one, eh, Kimball? I don't know what you mean. Ah, quit that innocent dribble. Where's that dough? Say, isn't your name Larry Scott? What? What makes you think that? Well, if your name isn't Larry Scott, it ought to be. You certainly resemble the Larry Scott whose pictures have been in the papers lately. Well, suppose it is. What of it? Nothing. Only I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Scott. Thank you. Dance? No, thanks. Now, look, Kimball. We know that you stumbled onto that money up in the old mill. Then you beat it down here to squawk. You didn't bring it with you. Where is it? I, I, I don't know. Listen, I'm giving you just five minutes to spill the works. Where'd you hide that dough? Up at the lake? Come up to the apartment right away? Well, maybe. Well, I'll tell you about it later, okay? All right. See you then. Goodbye. 
Well, that ransom bill and this railroad ticket definitely tie Kimball in Cedar Lake with his job. They do seem to fit. The serial number on this bill heads the list. Must have been taken right off the top of the pack. Come in. What is it, Donnelly? The guy out here says his name is John. You want to see him? Sure, I've been waiting for him. All right. Hiya, fella. Hello, Don. Say, who is this guy? Oh, the police assigned him as my bodyguard. I don't know whether he's with me or against me. <laughs> Say, any news about your uncle? Not since the ransom has been paid, but plenty's happened tonight. What? Kimball was killed. Up at the lodge? No, they caught up with him at the Aztec Cafe, where I was going to meet him. Well, why didn't you meet him here? He was afraid the place was being watched. And I've got a hunch it's the work of the same gang. I want to do a little investigating on my own before the police start messing around. You with me? Sure thing. We're going to leave for Cedar Lake right away. How long will it take you to get a suitcase? No time at all. Hop to it. Say, does this bodyguard have to go with us? I'll get rid of him and meet you as soon as I can get away. Okay. See you later. Chief Howell speaking. What's up, Donnelly? Sure you're supposed to stay with him. So young Scott's trying to take it on the lamb to Cedar Lake, eh? Hold the phone a minute, Donnelly. You're sure that Scott and Kimball never got together? Positive. But Scott knew what Kimball wanted. Doesn't that tie them both in on this case? We'll find out. Betty, you're leaving to Cedar Lake at daybreak. I'll arrange for a plane. Donnelly, make it easy for Scott to scram, understand? We're tailing him. Good luck, Betty. Thanks. I'll be back in a minute, Chief. Cigarettes too, Joe. Hey, Mac. Look at that plane up there. Looks like a private job. Wonder what he's doing in this neck of the woods. Search me. We've got an airfield in miles of here. Oh, well, maybe one of those crazy coast-to-coast -coast record breakers. Yeah. My way, miss? Which way do you mean? Straight ahead. Can I count on that? Sure. Are you sure this is as far as you want to go, miss? Certain. And thanks for the buggy ride. Well, that's okay. We have to give you a lift any time.
Wait a minute. How do we know this guy has a way of shooting on a square? Yeah, that's what worried me, too. Ah, oh, Nix, we'll find that out soon enough. Hiya, boys. That's so good. Be on the way up here. It's your job to see that he doesn't make it. That money must be in the hop. Get it if we have to tear the place to pieces. Been any strangers up here lately? No, not around here. Oh, there's a jail down the end. Came in by airplane this morning. That must have been the plane we saw. Suppose the cops picked up our trail? Wonder what the dame's doing here. I don't know. The mail carrier said she was a novelist or something. All right, Mo. Find out who the dame is and keep your eye on her. Okay. You be sure you take care of young Scott. Joe, we're going to get that dough. was either a good shot or an awfully bad one. Do you think it was aimed at us? They weren't aiming at the moon, that's a cinch. Well, let's change that turret, it won't change itself. What can I do for you? Why, well, I'd like a box of English tea biscuits. Uh, yes, ma'am. Right away. I don't believe I got those biscuits, miss. I'll sit and get them for you. Oh, no, thanks. I don't expect to be here that long. You're a stranger here in town, ain't you? Mm-hmm. I'm a novelist. Up here looking for little local color. Well, you ought to find plenty. The way the leaves are returning here late, late. <laughs> I heard you just got in town early this morning. Came in on an aeroplane. McIntyre said you rented you one of his cars. My news certainly travels fast in this town. <laughs> yeah. Well, most people don't stay right here in town. Mostly they have their own places around the lake. Hello, Sam. How are you coming? Get that stuff ready for me. We'll be back after a while. Sure, Sam. I'll put it up right away. He's all by himself, across the lake from the Scott place. Don't understand him lately. Usually he only buys beans and bacon. Now he starts order tomatoes and canned peaches and fresh meat. And even imported sardines the other day. <laughs> I guess a person living alone like that is likely to get a bit strange. Well, you can call it strange, but I think the old fool is just plain crazy. And he ain't the only funny one around here, another. Old man Kimball slipped off to the city early yesterday morning. Very mysterious. Acted scared to death of his own shadow. <laughs> really? Yes. Hey, Larry. This looks like the same car to me. I'll say it does. I wonder who it belongs to. I'll be seeing you, Dad. Yeah, you bet. Like my car? Not exactly, but I would like to know where it was about an hour ago. That's easy. It was out sightseeing with me. You sure you don't do your step a mountain road? Hardly. Why? Say, hey, aren't you the girl that I spilled a drink on at the Aztec Cafe last night? Who, me? Yes, you. Not that I remember. What are you doing here? Well, if you must know, I'm writing a magazine story. 
And I heard I might pick up some good character stuff around here. There are some odd people up here. That's just what I saw when I saw you boys examining my car. Don, that's the same girl I met at the Aztec Cafe, the one I was telling you about. Had you been drinking when you met her? Not that much. What do you think your angle is? I don't know. Well, I'm going in and get some groceries. Meet you at the car. Right. Well, well, well. Hello, Larry. Right glad to see you. Glad to see you, Jed. I'm mighty sorry to hear about your uncle. You know, I got a feeling he's going to turn up okay. Maybe. But it's beginning to look pretty bad. I hear you paid out $50,000 for him. Yeah. Say, Jed, who was that girl that was just in here? <laughs> what do you think of that? I plum forgot to ask her name. But I know everything else about her. Yeah, what? Well, she come in this morning in an airplane, stopping down the inn, rented herself a car from Mac. She's a novelist, looking for color. Whatever that is. Seems like a real sociable kind, though, for a young woman. Pert, too. I noticed that. Here, Jed. Fix me up with these groceries. Oh, sure. Same old things, I suppose. <laughs> Say, did old man Kimball come up with you? No, why? Well, he went to the city to see you. Left yesterday morning. Really? Yeah. You know, I said to myself, Jed, says I, there's well, something funny. Well, if Kimball isn't up at the lodge, you'll have to send me another cook. Get a hold of the Brooks boy if you can. All right. They take me around noon tomorrow to find him, but... I'll get him. Okay, you send the groceries up with him. Goodbye, Jed. Goodbye, Larry. <clears throat> first time that day one's been out for a week. Then I didn't get nothing for it. How was that? Oh, had a loan it to old Sam Hathaway a couple of hours while I was doing some work on his old heap. I'm afraid it's gonna take me a little time to fix this tire, miss. Well, that's all right. I won't need it tonight anyway. I'll pick it up in the morning. Got your stuff all ready for you, Sam. About time you showed up. I want you to fill this order for the Scott place. Do I have to take it clear up there yet tonight? No, I don't have to go up in the morning. But you gotta get it ready. Here. Come on, hurry, skedaddle. And my heart gets lazier every day. You're getting so ain't worth his keep. Oh, by the way, what did you do with that package of empty shells old man Kimball sent down with you the other day? Just well, take him with the groceries back to the lodge. Said he was gonna take him to the city and get him reloaded. <laughs> the old coot went away and forgot him. Where'd you put them? I suppose I'll have to find them myself. Well, here they are in this old rubbish box. Wonder somebody didn't take them out and burn them up. Hey, Bill. Put that in the box with the groceries. Sorry to keep you waiting, Sam, but I got so upset I forgot about you. This Scott kidnapping business is terrible, ain't it? Yes, terrible. 
Bill, turn on them lights. It's dark awful early these days. straight message to Mr. J.J. J. Morrison, 1215 Beachmont Street, Los Angeles, California. Getting local color faster than I expected. Stop. Better come up tonight and go hunting with me early in the morning. Stop. We'll guarantee you plenty of wild game. Signed, Betty. Right. <laughs> Looks like some of our local boys have been kidding her about the good hunting we have up here. Why, there hasn't been any but mud hens on the lake for years. <laughs> <laughs> You take the other side. Hey, Don. Right here, Larry. Here's the keys to that door. That bird must be inside. Somebody's certainly been here. Yeah, Kimball was right when he said plenty was happening up here. Whoever that was outside came into this house. So since she's not here now, how do you account for that? I don't know, but I'm positive he's not upstairs. Well, anyway, let's rustle up something to eat and then straighten the place up. Well, I'm with you on that eating business. Say, if you're that hungry, you better phone Jed and have him send that grub up tonight. I'll make some coffee while we're waiting. Okay. Say, Larry, what's that number down at the grocery store?
What's the matter? Did you have to stay and witness the old fossil? Ah, you're always beeping. What's the rush? Rush? We're picking up the mole and beating it up to Hathaway's cabin. Come on now, round for it. What about the dame? Nothing to worry about. She sent one telegram and I stalled around till the clerk read it back. Didn't mean anything, just to her boyfriend. Something about going hunting. Say, she's all right to play watchdog too. Why don't you keep your mind on your business? Ah, uh, she's all tucked in for the night. All right, hop in. Other way. Other way. Other way. Other way. Well, I wonder where that guy can be. Ah, uh, relax, boss. He can't be far away. Hathaway's giving us a run around. I'll do all the thinking, Joe. Well, it's about time you showed up. You suddenly fixed young Scott. He walked in on us almost before we had a chance to duck. And we didn't get the place half torn apart. Forget it. I found the money. Well, don't stand there looking at me. Where is it? The Judge Wall Street. They think it's a package of empty shells. Kimball left it there. Had that grocery key take it down from the lodge for him. Why didn't you grab it? How could I? Jed was looking. Oh, he couldn't get the dough. The big bad man was looking. Well, there was no use tipping our hand. I can get easier after Judd locks up for the night. It's right where the grocery that he's going to send to the lodge in the morning. Yeah? Well, you're staying right here. I've had enough of your blundering. Well, you and I are going down to the store on the double quick. Joe. You go to the cave and keep your eye on that ace in the hole. Oh, Hathaway, you watch those squirts at the lodge. 
Who is it? Bill. Come on in. What's the matter, Bill? You look like you'd seen a ghost. No, sir, didn't see no ghost and don't want to, neither. I ran all the way from the gate. Now, you don't think there's any ghosts up here, do you? I don't know. I hear Kimball tell Jeb there was some mighty queer goings on around here lately. What's this? Oh, yeah, that's a package Kimball was taking to town. Forgot it, I guess, so I brought it back. Well, Don, there's the groceries. Know how to cook? Listen, I'm so hungry I can cook by instinct. Well, you're elected, but the pots and pans are in the kitchen. I was afraid of that. I'll get them. Okay, Bill, thanks. I don't see no box of groceries put up for nobody. That's what he said. You think the old fool's trying to pull a fast one? That, my friend, shouldn't be very hard to find out. Hey. Hey! Listen, you. What did you do with that package Kimball left here? Well, what package? You got a package from the Scott place. Oh, you... You mean that package of empty shells old Kimball sent down here? That's right. Well, I must say, young fella, I can't see any reason for working up a sweat over a package of empty shotgun shells. Very unsociable like to come busting into a man's... Shut up. All that we want to know is about that package. I... I sent it up to the Scott place along... Not be tied up. Throw your rod in the bed. I said throw your rod in the bed. Now get your hands up. Both of you. Stand over there. Tie those boys up, Dad. But, ma'am, officer, I... Hurry. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Officer, oh, I got a piece of rope in the store. I'll get it. I thought you told me the dame was all washed up. All sleepy by. Fasten the buck, huh? Keep those hands up. Here's the rope, ma'am. Tie them up, Dad. <sighs> Tie them up. Yes, ma'am. Officer. See if they've got any more guns on them. Yes, ma'am. Uh, officer. Lie down on the floor so I can tie your legs. All right. What's over lightly? Oh, smart guy, eh? You better not get funny with me. Because I don't think that young lady, officer, is a fool. Phone the constable and tell him to come right over. And tell him to lock these men up until officers arrive for them in the morning. Yes, ma'am. Uh, officer. These men are tough customers, so don't take any chances. I'll see you later. Yeah, that ought to hold it. Thanks, Cupid. Hello. 
This is Jed, down to the store. Uh, put on your constable's badge and get over here right away. I got some business for you. Yep, right here in the store. Hurry up. I got to get my pants on. Kind of nippy these nights. Look here. How would you like to make a thousand bucks? Fine. But I don't never expect to. Things being like they are now. No, I'm not kidding. I mean, how would you like to make a thousand bucks right now? All you have to do is let us out of here and the dough is yours. Now, see here, mister, you ain't gonna bribe me. I've been an honest law-abiding citizen all my life. And I ain't going to change now. No, sirree. Lames are getting over here just as quick as a kin. And you are going to jail. And you're going to stay there. I promised that young lady, uh, officer, I'd keep you and I'm going to do it. Okay, okay, only sign off, will you? You bet I will. Don't see no reason why I should waste my time talking to likes of you know how. There's lame now. I hope. Well, how's the mastermind going to get us out of this mess? Come on, Lamb. Wait a minute, Jed. What's all the fuss about? I got a couple of desperate criminals. I want you to lock them up in jail. You know that lady that came in on the airplane? She turned out to be an officer. Caught them right in my room with guns. Hmm, city slickers, eh? Well, I guess I can handle you. Looks like you fellas better come along with me. What do you want us to do, roll? Reckon you're right. On time, Jed. These knots are easier to put in than they are to take out. Betty Mason, the girl you were talking to at the grocery store today. What are you doing here? Where's that package that Jed sent up with the groceries today? Right over there. What of it? Say, what is your racket anyway? You've caused me nothing but trouble. Trouble? You know nothing about trouble. But you will if you don't get out of here with this. How'd you know about that? Never mind. Take this and the two of you beat it out of here quick. We picked up two of the hoodlums down the village. And those who are still on the loose will be up after the stove. Wait a minute. Not so fast. Look out! Watch that money! Are you all right? Somebody slugged me. They got the money. Get in there.
Where are you going? I'm taking another lamb. I just heard that dame squawking a young scot. She's a copper. Well, so did I. But what about my cut of the money? What money? You heard me. in time. Take Mr. Scott back to the lodge and don't leave him for a minute. Right. Is my uncle all right? Yes. John, put him back to the lodge. All right. Take your hands off that bag. Okay, Ma. We'll tie him up. What about the skirt? I'll take care of her. She's going with us on a one-way ticket. You're too smart to try it, McBride. A move like that and you're a cinch for the hot seat. I'm not so dumb. If they do catch up with me, there won't be any identifying witnesses. Get me? All right, into the car, gang. told me the darn crooks broke loose and stole Lem's car. Which way were they heading, son? Up the old mill road. Are you hurt? No. I'm all right. They left Larry Scott tied up in the mill. And it's on fire. Henry! Take charge here till we get back. Okay.
I think so. You all right, Mark? Yeah, I'm all right. All right, give me that. Now I get you. Oh. Keep your head down. Well, it's all here, Mr. Scott, except the bill the police are holding. We recovered the ransom money. But give all the credit to Miss Betty Mason. I'll be in in the morning and make a formal report. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold a wire, I'll ask her. Betty! You know, I can't imagine anything nicer than a honeymoon in Honolulu. Can you? How long will it take you to get ready? Perfect. 